Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about another area of collectibles. This one's tied to clothing. There are some things in the clothing area that I still mess with all the time, every time I get them. We're going to talk about buckles today, and if you hang around to the end, I'm going to tell you a story of the very first buckle that I missed because I didn't know it was worth a fortune. And we're going to show you those buckles, and we're going to show you what they go for. That'll be at the very end, the last item I show you today. But let's hop over right now and show you some of the values, and I mean high thousands of dollar values on some buckles. So with buckles, the value is surely there if you know the brands, the styles, what to look for in these. They show up everywhere you're looking for clothing at, I can tell you right now. So if you're a clothing seller, buckles are something you should be definitely looking at. Even if they're on the belt still, even if they look like they're the type you can't remove without ruining the belt, I'll buy belts with a buckle on it and just cut off the belt all the time if the buckle is where the value is at doesn't matter to me. The buckle is all I really care about most of the time. Most of the time, the belt's just a Junko belt. Someone would put this on something else anyway. So this one, you can see, went for over $4,000. This is done by a California jeweler. This is all sterling silver, 14 karat gold, and 22 karat gold as well. There's rubies and stones all throughout this. Better be for that kind of price, $4,000. Now, if you don't know, all those big, giant, gaudy belts, the ones that are the most popular and sell for a ton of money, are related to the rodeo. All the rodeo belts and buckles that I find, I grab them up as quickly as I can find them. Even the just the Junko ones, the standard ones, that just show a Bronco Buster or something like that on the top. I will still hop on those in a second. This is just a perfect example. There's even rubies on the side where the belt slide piece bends up and down on this too so really fabulous piece here photos are a little dark but it, it's just a nice piece you just can't judge it at all by that here's another rodeo again rodeos are where all the money's at next to military military and rodeos are probably really close to the same range for the majority of them this one went for 34 almost 3500 dollars it's hand etched it's from 1949 these earlier ones are really the ones that just don't show up i don't think i've ever ran into a vintage vintage one from this long ago but i have ran into some rodeo ones that made us some insane amounts of money now here's a Shoshone powwow belt buckle here just a fabulous piece it has an 1893 ten dollar gold coin in it almost two thousand dollars nice example here the coin really sets this one off it's a nice known piece the coin is obviously much older than the buckle itself i would say now here's a clint orms this is eighteen hundred and fifty dollars again this one's marked most all of these sorts are going to be well marked especially if they're sterling silver like this one western style i like this one actually it's got a geometric almost um abstract arrows on the face of this very fine example here i don't think you can go wrong with something like this in all honesty now, unless you look at the backs of these, you'll never know the value. So always dig, always grab, always look and examine these whenever you find them. It's usually in a tray, a big tray, a box, or at an auction, there'll be a big box or something like that as well. We buy buckles in big bulk lots, so obviously nothing quite this fancy, but buckles in general always sell for us. Now here's an Edward Bolin. This is a Sterling as well. This is the type of belt buckle that I find that's Sterling in a store somewhere when most people wouldn't realize it. Most people who sell clothing, even mess with belts and buckles, never would assume a lot of these are Sterling. But I found quite a few. It's almost always the Western style or some really funky geometric design or something along that. You can cut off the leather and just sell this. These can be mounted on any other belt. So if you took these to a leather guy, he could set you up with whatever you need to make one that would fit you to your style, to your color, to your pattern. So this is a fine example here, almost $1,500. Now, obviously, I don't run into these high-end name brands here like this one, but, you know, any sterling buckle to me is a good find. I don't care what it really looks like. As long as it's sterling and it's sellable, it's a good piece and the price is right. Now here's another interesting one. This one's tied to Bob Hope, and it looks like it has an Academy Award in turquoise on the front. It's got the name of the artist who signed it on the back. It is from 1955. Over $1,200 for this piece here. Just a fabulous piece in my book. Anything that strikes your eye like this, you've got to be digging into and looking at. 
Now here is a modernistic Navajo belt buckle as well. It's signed on the back, really unique piece. Now a lot of people may not associate this with the Native American tribe because of the design and may think it's some cubist or modernistic uh, artist who did this, but that's not the case. This is a cast piece as well. Very fine quality, $785. Now here's a real eye popper sterling silver lizard belt buckle very nice example real stones in it as well finely detailed 555 dollars a lot of these realistic animal ones do sell very well you'll find all sorts of belts and buckles now i find buckles at almost every single place i source at so if you're sourcing for clothing again you got to be looking at the belts and buckles don't just look at them for eye appeal turn them all over and look at the backs you're going to run into some that are by a very good brand name or have some other issues with it maybe limited edition maybe it's sterling who knows but this is one area that most clothing buyers do tend to miss more than others and most people who buy antiques and collectibles in general do tend to miss some of these sorts of items now here's an interesting one this is a artist sign piece it's signed tasha this is carl tasha and it's a typical belt from the back it does everything you would expect a belt and buckle to do really interesting unique piece another nice example for 485 dollars now, a good area, too, are Boy Scouts, the commemorative pieces as well. Now, I was an Eagle Scout. I was in Scouts for quite some time. Philmont is like the national encampment of Boy Scouts. Anything that says Philmont, I'm 100% going to look up. If it's a dollar or two, I'm just going to buy it no matter what. Maybe even quite a bit more than that, depending on the version of it. $400, basically, on this one. Standard belt buckle. They've made quite a few of these. Boy Scout stuff in general, like this. You have to know what Philmont is for it to carry any meaning to you to begin with. Here's another fine example. Now, you'll see this emblem on Order of the Arrow items also. So this emblem itself should be a key to you to grab something like this. This example here, they made 50 of these. That was it. So this is a very scarce, very rare item. This is from the committee, the people who ran the entire order of the arrow at one point. They would have been able to buy this piece here and wear it. 375 bucks. It would have been only available to wear officially from that group from what I would understand as well. Now, another area are military and governmental style of belts and buckles. Now, this is the Hawaiian police. MC Lilly, the company that made this belt buckle here, is a company that was around in about 1880 on up. Now, this is a tongue and wreath style. These go back to the Civil War and before that. With this Hawaiian piece here, too, it has a crown on it. That crown signifies it being a country piece. It's from when they were a country before we actually had it as a possession, a territory of the United States. Excellent piece here, 375 bucks. Now, some of the most expensive buckles that I run into are military. Now, the earlier, the better. Now, a Revolutionary War belt buckle, a belt buckle that would held their belt up, can go for thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands, even twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 if you find the right one. Many people aren't even familiar with the designs on these to even know that they're military. Now, this is a War of 1812 artillery officer's belt plate buckle. Now, this would have went across and held up their ammo pouch that held their ball and shot in it. So this is something that would have went across their chest. It's not a belt buckle per se, but it is still a buckle. Excellent example actually of the eagle in the whole works. It has the ordnance cannons below it as well. Now this should be found in almost any good uniform belt buckle book that you can find on the market here. Well collected. There's a ton of people that would have hopped on this. Surprisingly only 750. It has some issues. So real nice example here. Now, this one is a Confederate Civil War era Virginia State buckle. This is a very fine example with the belt as well. This sort of thing can go for some phenomenal money. As you can see, almost $2,800. Civil War Confederate belts and buckles go for a fortune. As I said, some of these can go for ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 if you find the right combination. It was owned by the right person. Provenance means a whole bunch in this industry for things like this. You could add an immense value if, say, it's signed by the person who owned it. It has his name on it, so somebody else wouldn't acquire it. 
you have a picture of him wearing it or something along that line here again look at the price on this this is a massive piece here now here is a standard confederate states of america tongue and wreath just like we showed you with the hawaiian police this one went for some good money over twenty five hundred dollars these two pieces separate and in fact let me just show you you turn the tongue sideways and it slides to the opening and then you retwist it and then lock them into place these work great. I have some newer versions from the U.S. Navy that have the same basic design that I've shown in other videos. Again, look at the price again on this one here. Now, this last one comes with a story with it as well. I was first going to estate sales and live auctions probably 20 years ago. Didn't know a lot about military or belts and buckles or any of this sort of thing back in those days. I did know some paper and toys and things. We did sell clothing and books as well. I was at an auction and I had set a price on how much I wanted on a tray of buckles. They had, I don't know, 30 of them and I was looking to spend about three to five bucks a piece for the entire lot of these things. So I had calculated the price you know, the bidding started, I bid and it kept going, it kept going, it hit my mark and, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I, I'll stop out there, no big deal, I don't see anything fancy in that lot. Nothing piqued my interest at all, nothing looked like much that I'm used to seeing. Again, this is a long time ago, a couple decades probably ago. It went up to around $700 for this lot, maybe even a little hair higher than that. Some insane amount of money back then that I thought, you know, what the heck, at the end of the auction, I approached the guy who won and asked him what was going on with that because he was bidding against me. And he told me about this buckle here. Heston is a rodeo buckle as well. Doesn't have anything rodeo looking on it or anything else like that. If you look up this buckle right here, and again, I've ran into this one a few times since then as well and made some phenomenal money. They don't usually go for $700, but it's a $400 buckle almost any day of the week. Nothing fancy other than that word you see on it there. So this is an insider all day long. This is like a, a one that you could actually find because most people have no clue on earth unless they are in the rodeo industry or into farming or something along that line and who have been to a rodeo, let's say, would even know what that name is. Now, I've been to a few rodeos in my life, so, you know, it's an interesting, fun event, a lot of good food in the whole works, a lot of things to watch. But uh, this type of thing is missed by most people. Even some belt and buckle collectors will miss this one because it's so just plain with just a name. Some people think it's a transportation company or anything along that line too. Just a standard advertising piece. This is something you better be looking for because chances are if you do this long enough, you may actually run across one of these. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Shinobi, 19 stages of major oh, ninja major. warfare. Observe. You got your throwing stars, your bombs, your nunchucks. Shinobi, just one of 70 games from Sega. Master System and games sold separately.